Hi, my name is Ali Shersova from Bridger Digital. In this video, we're going to talk about subharmonic oscillations and slope compensation in peak current mode power supplies. It's a little bit of a complicated subject, so please bear with me and I'll try to make it as easy as I can. Subharmonic oscillations is a kind of instability that happens in peak current mode control power supplies, typically when the duty approaches 50%. Theoretically, we say it happens at 50%, but it actually can happen um, earlier than 50%. Uh, we've, we will do another video which will talk about this uh, later. But for now, what you see here on the screen is what actually happens when you've got subharmonic oscillations. It's a very characteristic look whereby your PWM is kind of doing thick pulse, thin pulse, thick pulse, thin pulse, thick pulse, thin pulse. Uh, and what will happen is that the ripple current will increase very much um, and the transit response becomes really poor. To understand why subharmonic oscillations happen, uh, we actually have to bear in mind two things <clears throat> that happens in a, power, in a peak current mode controlled power supply. Uh, one, uh, we are turning the switch on at exactly the same time, like any other, pass, any other fixed frequency power supply. For simplicity, let's say at 200 kilohertz, we will be switching the switch on at every five microseconds. But two, we are controlling the peak of the inductor current. We are not allowing the current to move freely like we do in voltage mode. Uh, we are actually trying to control the peak of the inductor current. And um, the waveform will look something like this. Here you can see that the yellow trace is your PWM. The pink trace is the um, it's supposed to be the, the inductor current, but in fact, you measure the switch current. So the upslope of this pink is in fact the upslope of the inductor current, but what is being displayed is the switch current. And the blue trace is uh, the reference. Um, at a certain time, we turn the switch on, that is occurring here. As soon as we turn the switch on, the inductor current will start to ramp up until it hits the reference. The reference is the demand value of our current, it's the value that we want. So the value that we want is the blue trace here. The value that we are getting is the pink trace. When the two are equal to each other, that is the correct value of the current and we will turn the switch off. And there, there we see right here, the switch is turned off. You can see it right here also. And then uh, the inductor current will actually start to free will through the diode, but uh, that is not the, the point here. Quite literally one cycle later, so in our case it was five microseconds, we turn the switch back on again. As soon as we turn the switch back on, the inductor current starts to rise, it hits the reference. At that point, the current that we want is the same as the current that we're getting. We turn the switch back off and the process repeats. So let's show this with the aid of a, uh, a diagram because it will make it a lot easier to understand. Um, here, I have got a 200 kilohertz power supply, so my period is five microseconds. At a certain time, I'm going to turn the switch on. There we go. At this point, I turn the switch on. The inductor current rises. It hits the reference value as soon as, the, as the, it's the same as the reference value. That's the value that I want, so we turn the switch off. The inductor current falls, and five microseconds later, from the beginning of the period, we turn the switch back on. The inductor current rises. It hits the reference value, and then again, it turns off the switch and the process repeats. What uh, we're showing here is in the absence of absolutely no perturbation. It's completely theoretical. In real life, of course, you always have some perturbation. And what we mean by perturbation is not a big step change, a load step that you give and you see the current dip and rise and so on. What we mean perturbation uh, in, in terms of a uh, current mode power supply is a tiny change in the, uh, in the value of the current for whatever reason. Let's say the uh, input voltage dips a little bit and the current changes just a little bit. So the change is not big enough to cause the power supply to go into non-linearities, but small enough to make a tiny little change in the duty. So in real life, there is going to be some perturbation. So let's have a look at what happens in the presence of the perturbation. Um, it is again uh, the same uh, simulation as the previous. The duty is bigger than 50%. I will talk about duty in a little bit later. Uh, we start our uh, 
uh, switch, we turn it on, and now let us say that there's a small change in the current, and that is being represented by the green line that you see. So as soon as there is a, a small change in the value of the current, again, it starts to rise, and it, in this particular case, is hitting the reference a little bit later, okay? So it hits the reference a little bit later, we turn it off, it comes down, but because it has hit the reference a little bit later, there's less time for it to fall down. So as you can see, it will not fall down as much as it did the previous time, but time has run out because our five microseconds is up and we're gonna turn the switch on again. So when we turn the switch back on, the value of the current here is not as low as it should have been, and therefore it very quickly rises, hits the reference earlier, and then we have to turn the switch back off again. And you can immediately see that you have got a thick pulse. On this point here, the duty would have been big, but because you have hit the reference quite early now, the duty is going to be small. And then you can see that it's falling down quite a lot. And who knows where it's going to go next, but it's going to have this impact of the duty getting big, little, big, little, big, little. The drawing that you're seeing um, is actually grossly exaggerated just for teaching purposes. So let's have a real simulation. Let's have a look at it and see what actually you expect to see in a simulation or like the scope plot that I showed you earlier on. So here, this is a real SPICE simulation. Um, I am turning the, the switch on, the inductor current rises, it hits the reference value, but because of that perturbation, it has got less time to fall down, therefore it comes down not as much as it would have done, then it's got less to go up in the uh, next cycle when I switch it back on, and you immediately see there's a thick pulse followed by a thin pulse. It has now hit the reference, so we're gonna have to turn the switch off, it goes back down, it's got a long time now to get down, it gets to a very low value, so the next pulse is going to be big when we clock it, there you go, you can see it, the bigger duty. Now, it hits the reference, uh, um, as you can see, and then it's got less time to come down because it hit the reference late, and then you turn it back on again, and, and, and you've got this big, thick pulse, thin pulse, thick pulse, thin pulse behavior, which is subharmonic oscillations. What we've discussed so far was for duties of bigger than 50%, but what if the duty is smaller than 50%? Now, you may have read in various application notes or books that uh, subharmonic oscillations do not happen for duties of less than 50%. Strictly speaking, that is not correct. Subharmonic oscillations actually happen at all duties. It's just that if your duty is 50, less than 50%, um, they naturally decay. So they start to wiggle a little bit, thick pulse, thin pulse, thick pulse, thin pulse. But this oscillation here gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and we eventually settle on a new steady state um, a, a duty. Um, and I'm showing that in this slide right now, whereby here is my steady state. You can see that the duty is constant. Uh, it's beautiful. The current is going up and down uh, within uh, the uh, ripple current uh, settings that we have set. Um, this is again a real spice simulation. And at this point here, uh, I have created a small perturbation by just a small drop in the uh, input voltage. You can see that the controller immediately increases the uh, duty uh, here in order to uh, compensate for the fact that input voltages come down a little bit. And then there is this wiggle in the current whereby it goes up, hits it uh, a bit earlier, then it's got a longer time to, to fall down. The next one, the pulse gets a little bit smaller, then the pulse gets a little bit bigger, then smaller, but not as small as last time. Then it gets bigger, but not as big as last time. Then it gets smaller here, but not as small as last time. And you can see that these oscillations are just naturally decaying until it gets to this point here, whereby they have all settled into a uh, new steady state value. And that is why we typically do not worry too much about uh, duties of less than 50%. Strictly speaking, it's not the case that uh, everything is great until 49.999% and suddenly at 50% uh, things go wrong. As you approach 50%, subharmonic oscillation can and do indeed happen. Even for duties as low as 30, 35%, uh, we have made 
another video which explains why this happens, but really beyond 20-30% you need to look after uh, subharmonic oscillations. Um, and uh, luckily though, most modern chips actually add this uh, slope compensating ramp in order to get rid of uh, um, subharmonic oscillations. So we have explained what subharmonic oscillations are and what they look like. How do we go about fixing it? Well, the root cause of this uh, phenomenon that is happening is uh, the way that we generate our PWM in peak current mode control. After all, this problem does not exist in voltage mode control. So let's have a look at how we generate the PWM in voltage mode and how do we created in current mode and then we can look at how we go about fixing it. So what you see on the left hand side is how PWM uh, is generated in voltage mode and what we have is a varying reference and a fixed ramp. This is going into a comparator and as this reference value is going up and down it's being compared with a fixed ramp. Uh, sometimes we call this an artificial ramp. Uh, you may have read that in books and application notes. A variable reference is getting uh, uh, compared in a comparator with a, an artificial fixed ramp and of course that is the output of the comparator is creating our duty. This is not the case in current mode because in current mode you have a variable reference but also you have a variable ramp because the ramp is being created by the inductor current which is of course varying and as a result of the interaction of a varying reference and a variable uh, ramp uh, we are getting these subharmonic oscillations. So the way to fix it is to look at this PWM section. Now if I had 100% artificial ramp as in the case of uh, voltage mode I don't get any subharmonic oscillations. If I have 100% varying ramp as in the case of peak current mode control I do get subharmonic oscillations. So what if I create a hybrid system which has got let's say for simplicity 50% artificial ramp and 50% uh, time varying ramp and this is exactly what we do. We effectively get a little bit of voltage modes fixed ramp and we add it into the varying ramp of current mode. Um, and this has the impact that it increases the slope of our ramp as I will show you very shortly and that is why it is called slope compensation. So uh, let us start with a varying ramp uh, which we're getting from our current sense. The, I'm showing this as mx uh, M1 X plus C when M is the gradient, X is on the time axis and C is a constant. Right? Let us now add a little bit of artificial fixed ramp. So we're adding a little bit of voltage mode control into our current control. And this one is starting from zero. So C, which is the intersect, is not there. M2 is the gradient of this artificial ramp that I'm adding. Now, if I add these two together, you can see that mathematically the gradient is going to be M1 plus M2. So in the case of these two uh, ramps, the, the slope is going to get sharper plus C, which was the uh, intersect of, of my original ramp. And you can see clearly here that the slope has sharpened, hence the name slope compensation. What it means is that we are turning off the switch a little bit earlier because our slope is sharper and also we are effectively adding a little bit of voltage mode fixed ramp into the current mode. So the question is how much ramp do we actually have to add? If you add too much ramp you can imagine if this part here is huge and this part here is tiny actually we get back into being voltage mode because the vast majority of our ramp is is artificial and a tiny bit of it is varying with the current and of course voltage mode has got its disadvantages that is why we um, um, invented current mode uh, so we lose all the benefits it might even go unstable if we add too little artificial ramp then it might get subharmonic oscillations therefore we're gonna have to find a sweet spot where we just get the right amount of ramp whereby we neither get into voltage mode nor do we get subharmonic oscillations luckily these days vast majority of um, um, 
ICs uh, for current mode add the ramp automatically. They very rarely add too little ramp, but sometimes they add too much ramp. And of course, we're going to do another video whereby we show exactly what happens if you're adding an inappropriate amount of ramp. So uh, we have talked about the slope compensation and we have talked about uh, compensating ramp. And now we're just gonna show at block level how we go about and create this vast majority of this is actually inside of the PWM IC that you're going to buy. And what you have here, you've got a clock and this is at your switching frequency. In our case, we said, let's say five microseconds to give us a switching frequency of 200 kilohertz. Every 200 kilos, every five microseconds, that clock is going to set this set reset flip flop, which is going to turn on the MOSFET, just like we showed in the previous uh, slide. So at let's say time equals zero, the clock pulse goes in, PWM turns on, current starts to ride. Here I'm measuring my current, um, and that is going into my comparator. Then. This, is half, this has to go through what we call a current gain and basically is converting the current measurement into a voltage so that because, uh, because the chip expects to receive a voltage representation of the current. Then we measure our voltage. We compare our voltage to our reference. This is the voltage that we want. This is the voltage that we are getting. Um, the difference between the two is our error that goes into our error amplifier that is internal to a chip that is the type 2 compensator. Again, we have done videos about this and that gives me my I ref, my reference current. That's the demand value of current which I showed in the previous slide. So this here is the uh, demand value of current. This is the current that I want. This here is the current that I'm actually getting. Now I've got this extra ramp generator block. Again, in the vast majority of modern chips, this is inside of the IC. It is adding a certain amount of slope compensation uh, into my ramp. So it's increasing the slope a little. It goes and gets compared in my comparator. Whenever I have the my measured current plus the slope compensating ramp equals reference, the output of this is going to go high, it's going to reset the flip-flop, it's going to uh, turn off the switch and the inductor current is going to fall, which is exactly what the previous plots and diagrams that uh, we showed you. At the beginning of the workshop, I did say that this was a little bit of a complicated subject. I hope that this video has made things a little bit clearer. Please join us in one of our workshops. We have regular workshops both in Germany and North America and I hope to see you in one of them.